I'm going to show you how to turn your watercolour paintings into Christmas cards. Let's get started. I've drawn the sheep and I'm masking the sheep with some paper towel. I'm using Daniel Smith's Christmas Tree Green. This is a new colour and I wanted to try it out. For a full list of all the materials I'm using, colours and alternative colours, please see the description below. Straight away, it's a cool, sort of rich, mossy green. Great for painting Christmas trees. So I'm adding some ultramarine now to the Christmas tree green. And you get sort of a lovely sort of blue-green colour here. Great for distant trees. So I'm actually adding cadmium yellow medium to the Christmas tree green and I love this colour. It's a beautiful fresh yellow green. I'm just diluting there. The paint is actually glowing. I'm using quinacridone gold here with the Christmas tree green and it's a really gorgeous colour. And lastly, I'm mixing up some burnt sienna with the Christmas tree green and you get a lovely grey green, beautiful granulation as well. If you don't have this colour, don't worry, I'll talk about alternatives as I paint along. So I'm using some more paper towel to mask out the foreground area and I'm mixing up a little bit more of some raw sienna this time with the Christmas tree green. I wanted a really sort of warm colour. Adding some more burnt sienna to the Christmas tree green and a little bit more of that cadmium yellow medium and I've also got some of the Christmas tree green on its own. You can use hooker's green or viridian as an alternative to the Christmas tree green. So I'm spritzing the background with clean water here and there and now I'm spattering the Christmas tree green on its own with my size four round brush just here and there and now I'm actually spattering the green mixed with the raw sienna but you can use yellow ochre and now the burnt sienna mixed with the green this is all kind of wet into wet but some areas of the paper are dry and I'm spattering the yellow now mixed with the green so I've got lots of varieties of colors here and I'm spritzing with my spritzer bottle just to get them to blend and mix and dilute them as well now I'm using the bottom of my paintbrush just to pull the paint around just to create some branches here and there. It's quite random and this painting is from my imagination. So you can really let go. So I'm using my size 10 brush and painting some of the green on the left hand side here and on the right hand side sort of painting down sort of to the horizon line really and behind the sheep. I've actually lifted up the paper towel here and I'm just carefully painting around the sheep wet into wet here with the green mixed with the burnt sienna. So you get a lovely dark against the light of the sheep and I'm using the bottom of the paintbrush to pull out the paint again applying some more sort of mid color here that's the green mixed with the yellow carefully painting around the top of the sheep and to the left here as well wet into wet mixing up some ultramarine applying that wet into wet here with my size 10 round brush so you can be really free at this stage working wet into wet I'm tilting now, allowing some of those puddles to run up to the top of the painting to create the look of tree trunks and branches. And I must say, I'm really pleased with this. And I'm just picking up the puddles with a clean, damp brush while I'm tilting so they don't run back into the painting later, maybe to cause a cauliflower. Might, that might be quite nice. So I'm mixing up some burnt sienna here with a little bit of Payne's Grey. I'm using a liner brush, taking off the excess paint on my paper towel. I'm painting this creamier wash damp into wet using the liner brush in the background there. And I'm actually using lots of squiggly lines and really letting go to create lots of details and information here, pretty much working damp into damp. So the surface is damp and my brush is damp. That means the paint isn't very wet. You don't need to do as much as I'm doing here, just have fun. 
and this is the brush I'm using so it's a long haired brush so you get some lovely long thin lines I'm just adding some more darks here at the top of the sheep and this will really bring out the sheep with the dark against light and I'm using burnt sienna the green and some Payne's grey painting damp into damp working my way around lifting the paper towel and I'm sprinkling some salt onto the damp painting and this will absorb the paint and create lovely light textures when the painting is dry if I was to do this again, I would spatter wet on dry. I found the blobs got too big and too dominant. So you could, if you wanted to, skip this stage and do this wet on dry later. So I'm just finishing off with a little spatter here and there, getting carried away. And now I'm lifting up with my plastic card some of the lighter tree trunks and branches and twigs, etc. Do this when the paint is damp and not too wet. Otherwise, the paint will run back in on itself and sometimes you can scratch the paper, which can be quite a nice effect as well. But in this instance, I wanted to create some lighter twigs and branches. So I'm painting behind the sheep now, wet on dry. I save this because there's small areas and you don't need to wet it. So I'm just using some of the green mixed with the burnt sienna, mixed with the raw sienna and just using my size four brush. And this is a classic example of negative painting. You're painting the spaces in between the positive shapes, the background, but it really does bring out those sheep as well, especially the light areas. So the painting has dried and you can see the salt has created some amazing textures. Now, again, you can leave your painting here and start painting the sheep. But I thought it'd be quite nice to add a few tree trunks and branches. So I'm mixing up the Christmas tree green with the raw sienna and the cadmium yellow medium. So it's quite an earthy sort of yellow colour here, adding a little bit of that colour to the green in the middle and then using the cadmium yellow medium and Christmas tree green for the puddle on the right hand side. Always mix up plenty of paint before you start painting. So I'm just brushing off the salt with my paper towel and I'm going to start painting some foliage behind the sheep now using the script liner brush wet on dry. I'm going with a lighter colour first and I'm now adding some dark colour here and that's the green with some Payne's grey and a pinch of burnt sienna. You can vary your colours and I just want to really bring out the sheep here. So I'm working wet on dry, still using that script brush and then sort of pulling out some of that paint to create some sort of darker foliage here and there. You can be really free with these marks as well and just have fun. So I'm just painting some darts behind the sheep here and then diluting and blending away. I'm also dropping in some darks as well here and there, still using the green with the Payne's grey and a pinch of burnt sienna. But again, you can play around with the different darts, use your own sort of colours. So wet on dry to begin with, carefully painting up to the edge of the sheep and then using a wet brush to sort of blend out to the background there. Adding some darks between the sheep's legs here, using the green Payne's Grey and Burnt Sienna mix, wet on dry, and just working my way round to the right hand side, and then adding water there just to blend out into the background. So I'm using the script brush here to paint in some trees here. At the bottom it's damp into damp, but at the top it's pretty much wet on dry. And I'm sort of varying the widths and just keeping it super loose. So for a tip to get the larger sort of tree trunks and branches, press down with the brush. To get the thinner branches, just lift off and use the tip of your brush. But keep loading your brush with paint and don't go back over areas. Just trust the process and just carry on painting. Don't overthink it. Don't try to perfect it. Just enjoy it. So as you can see, working sideways, I've worked from left to right 
and I find I get sort of better sort of mark making with the trees there it's quite hard to sort of sometimes paint sort of from the bottom of your paper upwards but sideways it makes it so much easier as you can see I'm varying the sort of trees here and the colors I've sort of added a bit more burnt sienna and a touch of ultramarine now just really kind of painting these sort of thinner marks for background trees here to really create depth in the painting here and I'm using the plastic card now to lift off the damp paint to create some lighter marks at the edges of the trees there. I'm mixing up some of the raw sienna very very dilute using my size 8 round brush. I'm mixing up alizarin crimson very very dilute you can use permanent rose as an alternative any pink will do. I'm wetting the foreground with my one inch flat brush and just applying that very dilute raw sienna. You can use a dilute yellow ochre as well. So I'm applying the dilute pink, very watered down, wet into wet. Snow isn't exactly white, it has got colour, so I'm giving it a hint of colour here. But I'm also leaving white areas of the paper as well to have some highlights and light on the snow. I'm painting the face of the sheep here. You can just use Payne's Grey, but if you want to mix it up a little bit, you could add a bit of the green, maybe some ultramarine, maybe a little bit of that alizarin crimson, just to kind of give it a little bit more depth. I'm lifting off the left side of the face there with a clean, damp brush, just to give the sheep a little bit of personality without going into too much detail. And I'm going to continue on now painting the faces of the sheep, wet on dry, and lifting off with a clean, damp brush. I'm going to paint the bodies of the sheep now, wet into wet, using the dilute colours that I use for the underpainting for the snow. That's the raw sienna and the dilute alizarin crimson. I'm starting off with the raw sienna and then I'm adding the alizarin crimson. So you've got a little bit of that raw sienna showing and a touch of the alizarin crimson. Paint each of the sheep one by one. Wet the surface first, go in with the raw sienna, wet into wet and then drop in the alizarin crimson leaving the top of the sheep white so that they really get pulled away from the background and it creates depth in your painting. I'm mixing up a dilute ultramarine with a pinch of Windsor Red, really dilute and this is for the shadow on the sheep. I'm painting it wet into wet with my size 8 brush at the bottom of the sheep. The paint will run up so just keep it at the bottom so you don't lose too much light. And I'm going to allow my painting to dry. And I'm using this shadow colour to paint underneath the sheep as well, wet on dry, just mixing up a little bit more then using my size 12 round brush. I'm using this shadow colour to paint wet on dry in the foreground area here. I've actually added a little bit more paint, made it a touch stronger, just to really sort of create those shadows in the snow to make the lighter parts of the snow that I painted previously much lighter looking as well. So I'm going to allow my painting to dry. For step five, I'm going to mix up burnt sienna with a little bit of the raw sienna and paint some grasses with my size two round brush wet on dry just here and there bigger marks in the foreground and smaller grasses as they go towards the sheep and it just creates some depth in the painting I'm just adding some dark marks wet on dry with my size 2 brush just here and there. It just adds a little bit of sharp details and makes the snow look so white. And I'm painting the legs of the sheep now wet on dry with my size 2 round brush using the Payne's Grey mixed with the Burnt Sienna. So as you can see, they're just keeping everything really simple, adding some shadows underneath the feet of the sheep wet on dry and adding a few more darker grasses here and there to finish off this stage and I'm going to allow my painting to dry. Once the painting is dry for step six I'm going to use a bokeh effect. I'm going to lift off circles with a stiff brush or you can use a sponge. I'm just working at lifting off the paint here and then removing the excess paint with a paper towel. It gives you the same effect that you get 
with camera photography and adds a little bit of atmosphere here as well. Now you don't need to do this. You could leave the painting as it is or you could dilute white watercolour or white gouache and paint circles of white of different sizes here and there and then allow your painting to dry. For step seven, I'm going to paint red berries by spattering and painting them with my brush. And I'm also painting the little dots with the tip of my brush, little circles. And I will be painting the shadows on the sheep as well, wet on dry. So I've mixed up ultramarine with a pinch of red. Using my size eight brush, I'm painting the shadow wet on dry and then using a dilute brush and working on the outside edge and painting in so you don't pull the paint out. So again, I'm painting the shadow, rinsing my brush and then working on the outside and coming in. And that way you get a flawless sort of blended edge and it's a really nice way of blending as well. So I've allowed my painting to dry and I'm just going to finish off with a spatter of light green. That's the yellow with a pinch of the Christmas tree green. And I'm also going to spatter some white gouache slightly watered down with my size 10 round brush. And I'll leave it up to you how much spattering you want to go on in your painting. I love to get carried away with this. And here is the finished painting. I really hope you enjoy this tutorial and I'm going to show you how to make it into cards. So I photographed the painting and I've printed off two prints of different sizes for two different sizes of cards. I've actually stuck them to the card and I've allowed that to dry. And now I'm applying PVA glue on top of the print and I'm actually sprinkling green and silver glitter using a dry brush and sort of flicking it onto the painting there so it sticks on nicely with the wet glue and then tap the card onto the surface to shake off any excess glitter and look at that gorgeous card. So I'm going to do the same to the smaller card, apply the PVA glue with a synthetic brush here. And I'm not actually going to cover the sheep. I'm just doing the background and foreground and sprinkling the green glitter onto the tree area and the silver glitter onto the snow, tapping off any excess glitter. And look at that. It looks so Christmassy. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful in turning your paintings into Christmas cards. If you'd like to support the content that I create here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? You will get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials and downloadable line drawings. Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.